Lord, you want us to tell people of your love and to show them your love, that they may also come and join us in your family. So, Lord, we pray today to be with us, to speak to us all, to show us what you would have us do, and all in your name. Amen. I don't know if you remember um, last month when Margaret was preaching on the slightly earlier part of this passage. And she was talking about how the shepherd cares for his sheep, how the shepherd guards the sheep pen, the sheepfold, how he knows everything about his sheep. I went home after listening to Margaret and pondering over the next passage because I knew I'd be talking about it. Now, some of you may have seen this story in the Telegraph, but I'm going to read it to you anyway, because that day, there was a little story about some sheep. And it summed up a bit about what Margaret was saying, and it gave me an awful lot of thought for today. So I'm going to read you a bit of it anyway. A flock of sheep was left feeling rather woolly-headed after accidentally munching on thousands of pounds worth of cannabis plants. The animals began stumbling around after getting high on seven bags of the intoxicating plant which had been dumped in their field. The 4,000 pounds hoard of cannabis plants, each about three foot tall, was found by the sheep at the edge of their field. And the owner had this comment, my sheep being inquisitive, had an interesting feast on it. They weren't quite on their backs with their legs in the air, but they probably had the munchies. They haven't had any other side effects, but I'll tell you about it next week. At first I thought it was someone's hedgerow rubbish, but when I got there I realised it was a form of herbal cannabis, and they were very strong in the scent. That's Exactly, summing up what Margaret was saying, the Lord looks after his sheep. But it's also very relevant for what the passage was today. Because if people do not go to the Lord, there is no knowing where they will end up, and we know ourselves. So it goes on a little bit further from what Margaret was talking about. We are sheep, the sheep of his pasture. We are the sheep welcomed into his sheepfold and looked after by the Lord. But, and it's quite a strong but, we're not just called to be sheep. We are sometimes called to be shepherds. We are sometimes called to ensure that people, other sheep, do not go running after the most exciting thing that's lying at the edge of their field, which could leave them, at the very least, dopey, and at the very worst, in serious trouble. I was thinking about this because it's very easy to be a sheep. It's very easy to just sit there and think that someone else will do things. Someone else can go and look for some other people. Someone else can go and be a street pastor on a Friday or Saturday night. Someone else can do the flowers. Someone else can clean the church. Someone else can go out and tell people about Jesus. I don't have to. I can just sit here, sit tight, rest in his word and in all the comfort that we have. But of course, if we do that, the kingdom of God's not going to get any bigger. Because yes, Jesus can come and he can recruit whomsoever he chooses. But actually, there is a command in the Bible that says, Go out and make disciples of all nations. And if we believe that what Christ said in the Bible is not just a pretty little story, it's actually true, and it's actually for us, then I don't know about you, but I think we have to do rather more than just sit here and listen. Just lie down and be an obedient sheep. We have to be an obedient shepherd. Because... If we're just sheep, well, we've all gone astray. We've all gone our own way. But those sheepfolds are not going to be filled. The other sheep from other sheep pens are not going to be fetched 
found and brought over to the truth. We can think, perhaps, back to the riots in 2010, when it seemed to be contagious. There was a riot in one town, there was a riot in another town. Everyone was joining in. But there were places where Christians opened their churches, gathered together, and prayed. They opened them and let people come in if they were scared or worried about being outside. And when it was all over, they went out and cleaned up the mess. That's actually being a shepherd. It's not being a sheep. Same thing applies as we look around our world at the moment. The world's in desperate need of shepherds from the right sheepfold. There's rather more than cannabis at stake in some parts of the world, some parts of this country. We've got people going off to Syria, people going off to Iraq, believing in something that they're going off to fight for. We've got people in West Africa, very ill or dying of Ebola. Yet we've got people trying to do something about it. We've got people like William Pooley, who had Ebola himself and has now gone back to try and fight that infection for other people. There are groups who are trying to welcome back those who've gone on to Iraq and to Syria to try and reintegrate them. Of course, it's not necessarily Christians who may be acting as a shepherd. There were all those celebrity singers who got that phone call from Bob Geldof, come and sing to defeat Ebola. So they recorded Band-Aid yesterday. There was all the fun and games for children in need on Friday, taking shepherds to make people part with £34 million. When I went to work on Friday, it seemed that every single child in Billericay was at Billericay Station collecting money. And when I came back, their parents had joined them. Same thing in Brentwood. People being shepherds, out to assist those in need. Yes, perhaps not the local Christians, although an awful lot of them were there. But I would argue, God-inspired. People listening, watching, going out to help those in need. And it doesn't matter whether it's singing a song, collecting money, or as I said, cleaning a place, arranging the flowers, doing breakfast, making people feel welcome. Because if we're not shepherds, the sheep will be lost. If we're not shepherds, the sheep won't come in. Sheep aren't noted for going out and getting other people. They will follow one another but they're not noted for going out and tapping someone on the shoulder saying, hey, I've got something to tell you. And if there is a bunch of cannabis at the edge of the field, one of them and then another and then everybody will go and join in. Something odd, something new, something bright, something exciting. And we know ourselves we will go and investigate. It can have rather more of an effect than the cannabis had on these sheep. It can kill people. It can remove them from the love of God. If we're not there, if we are not there to show them the love and the peace of Christ, the God who sent his son to die for us, if we just sit here and wait, God's kingdom is not going to grow. Yes, sometimes we need to come in, refresh ourselves, live in his sheepfold, live under his arms. But we do need to go out. We do need to bring other people in. We believe in a great and glorious God, a saviour who gave up his life for us, a Holy Spirit who can inspire us to go out into the world. And if we don't say that, and if we don't act on that, then God's kingdom will just be a field with a load of confused sheep wandering around. 
and an owner turning up wondering what on earth has gone wrong. So I'll just leave you with this thought. Are you a sheep? Are you a shepherd? We're probably both. We probably need to be both. But what's the cannabis that you need to stop people reaching today or during the rest of the week? What is it that you can say or do that will stop people running to destruction? What is it that you, we, can say or do that will win other people for Christ? Amen.